king's man redeemer or your destiny helper, whichever you prefer. But today is king's financial redeemer. Please do not forget me. I am part of there, you know. <laughs> Once you get there, your, your destiny helper now will teach you the right wealth principles. The right principles of building wealth. And they may not teach you like in a classroom. You will learn by observing them. You will see what they do. And when you start doing what they do. Remember, you are used to dealing with leftovers. Isn't it? Now you've been brought to the table. You are seeing what people, kings at the table, how they behave. Isn't it? Eh? Ruth left with the leftovers. In fact, the people at the table said, carry as much as you can, but come back, we'll show you something else. Now, once you're comfortable, you've accepted your position, now you're sitting at the table, because it doesn't happen just like that. Eh? Think your mentality, your mindset starts changing. Uh, I'm going to read uh, a few scriptures. Ruth, chapter two, verse one. It says, there was a relative of Naomi's husband, a man of great wealth, of the family of Elimelech. His name was Boaz. Now you start learning the habits of men of great, great wealth. Ruth chapter 2 verse 3 says, sorry, okay, let me, let me go step by step. So first of all, everybody who sits, sits at the table is a man of great, man of great wealth, okay? Number two, uh, which in, we are taking it from verse 3, then she left and went to the, went and gleaned in the field after the reapers, and she happened to the come to the part to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Elimelech. Now we are not seeing things from Ruth's point of view. That's what I'm trying to make. Now we are seeing things from Boaz's point of point of view. So Boaz uh, owned what? He owned fields, isn't it? Eh? So Boaz, the people who sit at the table, at the king's table, they own assets. They own what? So if you do not have assets, you have something missing. Okay? Ruth chapter 4, verse 8 to 10. Therefore, the close relative to say to Boaz, buy it yourself. So he took off his sandal, and Boaz said to the elders and all the people, you are witnesses this day that I have bought all that was Elimelech's and all that was Chilion's and Mahlon's from the hand of Naomi. Moreover, Ruth, the Moabitess, the widow of Mahlon, I have acquired as my wife to perpetuate the name of the dead through his inheritance, that the name of the dead, dead may not be cut off from among his brethren and from his position at the gate. You are witnesses this day. I think, again, this day has come, by the way. I didn't see that on camera. You are witnesses this day. So, let's see uh, what things from Boaz's perspective. Boaz was a man of wealth, great wealth. Number two, when you see how he followed the process, because he didn't try to circumvent the process. He was a man of integrity. He was willing to lose Ruth, if it meant losing Ruth, through the process. Okay? He was an employer. Remember the reapers? He had employed the reapers. So, if you're seated at the table, you also need to be a what? An employer. Uh, number four, we are seeing, already we know that he owns land. And now he's buying the lands from the hand of Naomi and her children, meaning he's buying more fields, isn't it? Eh? So, he not only owns one field, he owns assets, he buys assets. He keeps buying assets. Okay? So, when you put assets together, you get a portfolio. You get what? He has a portfolio of assets. 
there are people who have one asset. It's not enough to sit at the table. You need to have a portfolio of assets. And then we also see he was a generous man. He was a generous man. He was giving. He was not giving Ruth so that she becomes his wife, no. It was just out of goodwill, compassion. He was a giver. And number seven, he was a kingsman redeemer, meaning he recognized the moment to hold someone and bring them to the table and make them his equal. He was a kingsman redeemer. So what, what should we learn from this? What are the practical things we must learn from this? So one of the things that really impressed me is, that the, is the fact that there was land that was on sale here, isn't it? Eh? If I put land on sale right now, here, majority of us will want to buy it, but will not be able to buy it because we will not have what? We will not have what? Yeah? The capacity. You guys read too sophisticated English. Just said money. Mullah. Because you don't have money, isn't it? Eh? So clearly he had what? He had money. So does that mean, what does that mean? Uh, it means he was practicing a very fundamental concept of kingdom finances, which I have been preaching. Pay yourself. You can earn 10 million shillings a month, but you will also spend 10 million a shilling, shilling a month. Then you will not have what? You will not have money. When opportunity comes, you will not be able to seize opportunities. It's a kingdom principle. You, even the Bible says, pay yourself. Isn't it? Eh? So, you must pay yourself. And uh, Prophetess spoke about, uh, we are going into seven years of prosperity and seven years of famine. Isn't it? Eh? What did Joseph do? Did he store everything and people, the people ended up dying? He stored, he stored, but people still ate, isn't it? Eh? They paid themselves, isn't it? Eh? If you don't pay yourself fast for these seven years, you will not be able to survive the next seven years. You get it? Yes. It's a kingdom principle. Now, as you're paying yourself fast, it comes in small doses. I tell people, even if it is one shilling, please pay yourself one, one shilling. And by the way, let me clarify here before I go too far. Where do you pay yourself first? It must be an investment account. Because if he put that money that he was going to buy the field with under his mattress, he could have found it is stolen. Isn't it? Eh? That money must have been put somewhere. So. Pay yourself first through an investment account, yeah? and I can, t I can show you how to do that. Uh, <laughs> but the thing is, is, paying yourself comes in small doses. But Swahili says, kidogo kidogo hujaza. So when you're paying yourself over the years, you will have built up sufficient capital. And this is what was happening in Boaz's life. By the time Naomi and Ruth were showing up in Bethlehem, he had been doing this for years, and he was the man now with the money to buy the, to buy the land. Number three, if you want to sit at the table, you must buy one asset at a time. Keep buying assets. Now, what is an asset? Take it from me. From this day forward, we demystify what an asset is. An asset is anything that puts cash in your pocket. And a liability is anything that takes cash out of your So if you have that land that uh, does not put cash in the pocket, yeah, 
and you have employed security guards, you've been farming, it is seven years, you've never ripped anything, that thing is a liability, it is not a? An asset must put cash in your? Sour. So, you buy one asset at a time, and that asset must put cash in your? Pocket. It goes to your portfolio, not your pocket, by the way. <laughs> so, once you follow that, it's all about cash flow. It's all about cash flow. How much is your portfolio? Because now you have a portfolio of assets. How much is your portfolio giving you in cash? Like at the end of the month. And me, I prefer the one at the end of the month. If today you come with an opportunity, because I know, I see some people here who will come to tell me, Paz, I have an opportunity. Now, before you come to me, that thing that you come to speak to me about must give me cash at the end of the month. Starting this month. Don't tell me five years from now. I'll be like, okay. <laughs> That's not a... It's not an asset, isn't it? Eh? So, cash flow. This investment is a game for cash flow. If you want financial redemption, and uh, Masi is my colleague here, so we, and some of the NABO people here, they can tell you we have, we have seen very many instances where people are asset rich and cash poor. You can have a lot of assets, but you sleep hungry. The key, the key baro barometer of true wealth is cash. Can it pay your rent? Can it take your kids to school? And not for one term, for every term into the future. That is a key barometer. So cash flow, then you are a blessed man. And because you are a blessed man, the last two kingdom principles are very important. You must give people your leftovers. You must be a generous giver. You know, I have spoken about financial redemption, but never before has it ever hit home for me like this time around. I want God to bless me. And I want to be very purposeful to leave leftovers for others, those who are struggling. I want them to come and glean in my fields. And I tell my, my reapers, leave purposely for them that they rip something, that they go home with something, yeah? If you read that book of Ruth, it says that when Ruth carried his bag, her bag of, of uh, grains from gleaning, she also carried the food, or leftover food. And when she got there, she gave it to Naomi. And Naomi, first of all, ate the food from leftover. There are people who need our leftover. It is God's kingdom support system. We must plug in into that support system. If, now listen, if Boaz was a very, was a man of great wealth as the Bible says, but did not have a generous heart. A generous heart to, to not only invite Ruth to the table and also give us so much of leftovers in the field. He would have missed his help mate. So giving, there is no loss in giving. It comes back in a different way. Right? It is in the giving that also God was leading him to his kingdom spouse, to his helpmate, kingdom principle. I have never said that point before like I've said it today. Now, the seventh one is the one that really is most amazing. The most amazing. You must be someone else's kingsman redeemer. And in this particular case, 
to the final push. On this very day, you guys must also be someone else's King's Financial Redeemers. The circle continues. It's a cycle, isn't it? Eh? So Boaz creates, brings Ruth to the table. Ruth brings somebody else to the table. You know, Ruth brings Pius to the table. Pius brings Cynthia to the table. Yeah, at the end of the day, we all come to the Because where we started, we said, and God was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous. So it is his will that we be, but we have to be prosperous in his will, his way, his principles. Amen? So, what is financial redemption? As you ponder over that, let me say something that, uh, Warren, uh, is it uh, Warren Buffett? Warren Buffett said, if you don't find a way of making money while you're sleeping, you'll probably work until you die. If you don't find a way of making money while you're sleeping, you'll probably work until you, until you die. There, there is no letting go. The world will not let you go. That's why that portfolio cash flows is very, very key, isn't it? Eh? I believe and I know and I do <laughs> know my calling is to bring financial redemption. That's my calling. And uh, I've had my journey. I've had my vows. I've had my destiny help us. And I'm here to create a pipeline of other redeemers like yourselves. Because this is kingdom knowledge. This is not for the people who went to a certain school. Eh? So, please, let me repeat that. If you don't find a way of making money while you sleep, you'll probably work until you die. When, when Ruth went to lie on Boaz's feet, he was sleeping. Isn't it? Eh? But he was still making money. He was only showing up in the field. He has reapers. He just comes to do kingdom work. And for me, that's the most important thing. How can I deliver the people who are here to a place where they can do their kingdom purpose as soon as possible and for the longest period possible in their lives? That's my purpose. So, my de now to my definition of financial redemption. Financial redemption is when you get to do what you love to do every single day of the year. If you can do that, then you have achieved financial freedom because then you are doing what God wants you to be doing. You're not doing what you're doing to pay bills. Financial redemption is when, when you get to do what you love to do every single day of the year. And the sooner we get there, the better. The sooner we get there, the better. That's what we do at Nabo Capital. Our mission is to deliver you as quickly as possible to that place of financial redemption point. And now you're in your purpose. So who has been redeemed today? I too have been redeemed. I have done my work. I have brought you to number seven. Now go make other King's Financial Redeemers. Thank you very much.